What is the difference between a believer and a disciple? How do you identify a disciple of Jesus Christ? How do you become a disciple of Jesus Christ? We're going to dive into this right now. Believer is someone who comes to the cross. Disciple is someone who gets on the cross and carries his cross. Believer, he retreats to safety. A disciple embraces suffering. Believer comes to church. Disciples are the church. Believers cheer from the sidelines. Disciples are in the game. Believers read the word. Disciples live it. Believer is all about believing. Disciple is all about being. Believer is a comfort driven. A disciple makes sacrifices. And believer talks. A disciple makes disciples. I believe the time has come for us to move from a believer to a disciple. From changing to growing. To move from running from suffering to embracing suffering. From hitting the ball to hitting the home run. God is calling us today to move from maintaining to multiplication. Jesus called people in the world to come and believe in Him. But once they believe, He has one more challenge for each and every one of us. And that is to come and die, to come and follow Him, to come and pick up the cross and become more like Him. The pandemic that happens in Christianity today is believers who don't become disciples. Believers who simply believe in Jesus Christ, but they don't want to belong and they don't want to become like Jesus Christ and they don't embrace His characteristics and His life. Now what does it take to be a disciple? What is the distinction or what are the marks, if I could say a Snapchat of a disciple of Jesus Christ? I'm going to give you five simple marks of a disciple of Jesus Christ. First mark is a disciple feeds on the Holy Scriptures. In John chapter 8 verse 31 Jesus says, Then Jesus said to those who believe in Him, If you abide in My word, you are My disciples indeed. So disciples of Jesus Christ, they abide in His word. They don't just have a Bible. They don't just have a Bible installed on their app. They don't just have a verse of the day. They don't just read the word. They feed on the word. They don't just feed on the word, but they consume that word and they live that word out. There's many things you can do with your Bible. You can read it, you can listen to it, you can apply it, you can speak it, you can memorize it and you can meditate it. But the most important thing that every one of us is called to do with our Bible, that is to obey our Bible. And that's I think the difference between the disciple and the believer is the believer he might know the Bible but a disciple he lives the Bible. He feeds on the Holy Scriptures. It becomes his daily bread. It becomes his sword. It becomes his hammer. It becomes his seed. It becomes his oil. It becomes his light. It becomes his life. That's number one. Distinction of a disciple is that he feeds on the Holy Scriptures. He abides in the Word. Number two is a disciple follows the Holy Spirit. Mark chapter 1 verse 17 and 18, Then Jesus said to His disciples, If you, if anyone desires to come after Me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow Me. I want you to notice twice he says after me if anybody desires to come after me and then he says at the end follow me. Now today Jesus doesn't live here on earth. He's in heaven but he is with us through the Holy Spirit. In fact the Holy Spirit has taken the place of Christ. Jesus himself said that I will send you another, another one of the same kind, comforter, another teacher, another guide. His name is the Holy Spirit. And believers today have the same access to the Holy Spirit that disciples of Jesus had access to Jesus. And therefore the Holy Spirit who lives in us, He guides us, He helps us to understand the Scriptures, He fills us with power, He fills us with strength and He gives us purpose. And so the second mark of every disciple is that a disciple follows the Holy Spirit. Disciple is filled with the Holy Spirit. Disciple is sensitive to the Holy Spirit. Disciple is led by the Holy Spirit. Disciple develops and cultivates relationship with the Holy Spirit. Disciple enjoys the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. And so if you are just simply coming to church, if you're simply just embraced eternal life as the gift from Jesus Christ, He wants you to grow in Him. He wants you to be His disciple. He wants you to know His Spirit and He wants you to be known by His Spirit and to be led by His Spirit. Mark number three of what it means to be a disciple. A disciple forsakes those things that hinder His follow. Matthew chapter 16 verse 24 says, Then Jesus said to His disciples, If anyone desires to come after Me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. Mark chapter 1, 17 and 18, it talks about Jesus tells his disciples to come and follow him. And then it says that they immediately left their nets and they followed him. Now, the mark for us is that we first feed on the scriptures. We then follow the Holy Spirit and then we forsake what hinders our follow. We forsake what hinders 
our following of Jesus Christ. Jesus used the word pick up your cross. He's not talking about to go and find an area of your life where you can, you know, inflict suffering or pain. He's saying that as you follow me, it could lead you to a place of discomfort. It could lead you to a place of sacrifice. It could lead you to a place of self-denial. And he says that he wants you to embrace self-denial in your attempt to follow Jesus. We don't embrace discipline for the sake of discipline. We seek devotion to the Lord and that devotion decides our discipline. Discipline in itself has no heavenly reward if it's not birthed by your devotion. There's a lot of disciplined people who wake up very early, who abstain from certain types of foods, who abstain from certain behaviors and certain things like alcohol and smoking and they're not anywhere closer to heaven than those people who are doing the opposite because discipline doesn't bring you closer to God. What brings you closer to God is Jesus, is the Holy Spirit and as you follow Him, that's why Jesus didn't say go and pick up the cross, He says follow me. He says if you want to follow me, so meaning the desire to follow Him precedes the desire to deny yourself, your desires, your pleasures and your comforts. Please don't fall in love with discipline, fall in love with Jesus and that love for Jesus will put limits on your liberties. It will put restrictions and boundaries in your life. That devotion will regulate, will create your discipline. So discipline is not the goal, discipline is the result of the devotion that the disciple has towards Jesus. Number four, disciple fishes for souls. So disciple is a fisherman. See, as somebody who believes in Jesus, they just got saved. But a disciple, he goes on saving others through the power of preaching the good news. Jesus says in Mark chapter 1 verse 17 and 18, Jesus said to them, follow me and I will make you the fishers of men. Immediately they left their nets and followed him. So we see that, you know, there's a follow, there's forsaking and then there's fishing. He says that the byproduct of you following me is I will make you fishers of men. I want you to notice that Jesus didn't say He will make us wealthy. He didn't say I will make you healthy. He didn't say I will make you famous. He didn't say I will make you popular. He didn't say I will give you a blessing. Even though sometimes these things can be a result of following Christ and sometimes they're not. But that's not what His promise is. His promise is that you will live for the same reason He died for. You will make salvation of people your primary reason for existence. Your purpose will be fueled by what He loved, what He died for. He says, I will make you fishers of men. If you truly follow Jesus, there will be a result. There will be a fruit of following Jesus. You will have a heart for the lost. You will see winning other people to Jesus as your primary reason for being on this earth. I love the fact that Jesus compared evangelism to fishing because the principle is that if you go fishing, you have to go. You can't sit at home and hope for the fish to come into your house, knock on the door and ask to come into your house. You have to go where the fish is and as a fisherman, you use different kind of baits for different kinds of fish. As Christians who are disciples of Jesus Christ, we have to go into the world. We can't wait for the world to come to church. What makes a difference between a disciple and a believer is that the believer only comes to church. A disciple goes into the world. Jesus says, go into all the world and make disciples. So that means that He expects us to go. That's one of the reasons why I believe in using every means possible from social media to touch cards, to sharing your faith with your neighbors, with your friends, through giving people gifts, inviting them to lunch, everything you can to standing up on the corners of the street with a microphone and preaching, preaching the good news, and, or hellfire, whatever, whatever suits your personality and your conviction. But we have to get the message about Jesus Christ to this world. And that's what disciples do. Disciples fish for souls. Believers, they simply stay comfortable on the seashore of their doctrinal beliefs. They love Jesus, Jesus loves them. But disciples, they go and they roll their sleeves and they jump into the purposes of God and they win the lost. Number five, disciples feed the lambs. Or in other words, disciples make disciples. In Matthew 28, it, it talks about go into all the world and make disciples. I find it interesting that Jesus didn't say go into all the world and make decisions or make converts. He says go and make disciples and only a disciple can make a disciple. If you have not been discipled, you can't make disciples. Believers don't make disciples. Believers must become disciples of Jesus Christ and disciples must make disciples for Jesus Christ. I find it interesting because in the beginning of Jesus' ministry, Jesus told 
told Peter, John and his disciples, come and follow me, I will make you fishers of men. But then towards the end of his ministry, sitting on the seashore, he welcomes them and he says to Peter this, John 21, 15. And so when they had eaten breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon son of Jonah, do you love me more than this? He said to him, yes Lord, you know that I love you. And he said to him, feed my lambs. Interesting. In the beginning of his ministry, he said, fish for souls. I will make you fishers. Towards the end of the ministry, he says, do you love me? And when Peter says yes, he gives him a new assignment. He says, feed my lambs. Lambs, meaning these are believers now. He's saying, I want you to mature my believers. I want you, in other words, reproduce disciples. I want you to multiply. I want you to begin to now mentor other believers. I want you to step into your calling as like a spiritual father to young babes. Every Christian goes through three main spiritual growths. The first one is you are a child, then you are a young man and then you are a father. It's exemplified in the epistle of John is that there are children, there's young men and then there's fathers. A child is somebody who needs care, a youth or a young man is somebody who cares for himself and then a father is somebody who cares for a child. And Jesus is calling Peter and says, I want you to be caring now for other believers to mature them into full stature of Jesus Christ so that they can become disciples. So disciple is somebody who feeds on the scriptures. It's somebody who follows the Holy Spirit. A disciple is somebody who denies himself. In other words, somebody who forsakes that which hinders their follow. Disciple fishes for souls, meaning they win souls and disciples make disciples. Thank you for watching this video. Are you a disciple of Jesus Christ? Drop your answer in the comment below. Don't forget to hit thumbs up for this video. It will help us to reach more people through it and subscribe. Click on the bell so that you can be reminded each time that we go live. God bless you and until next time.